How you doing there, David? Good morning. I am pretty chipper this week because uh, this is a busy week. I am going to Vegas for a very, very, very special event. And I think we may have a guest waiting in the waiting rooms that will tell us more about this Vegas event. I had the pleasure of meeting our guest about a year ago, about this time, down in Washington, D.C. So today on the show, we actually have a lawyer, an attorney, and his name is Mr. Brendan Bunn, and he is from the D.C. area, right? Brendan, welcome to the show. So glad Thank to you, have bro. you. Thanks for being here, man. Now, I was just mentioning to David that, that we met about a year ago down at the CAI Expo in D.C., and that you're an attorney down there. Now, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about what, what it is that you did, Brendan? Well, thanks for having me on, fellas. This is a great format. Love it. And I've seen this show many times. So so I'm a lawyer. Yeah, as you mentioned, I'm out of Washington, D.C. and also Northern Virginia, just outside D.C. I'm a condo lawyer. I mean, my whole career since 1993, I have been a lawyer representing community associations throughout Washington, D.C. and all through Virginia. Uh, I'm with a law firm called Javik Washington, Moriarty, Elmer and Bunn. We actually have 21 lawyers, a bunch of paralegals, and we represent between 3,500 and 4,000 associations. Wow. So we're, yeah, we're a pretty big practice group. And so, so that's what we do. We counsel condo associations and homeowners associations on the whole bevy of things that they face on an ongoing basis. Wow. That is a little bit of a mouthful for the, the association name, I gotta say, but <laughs> you say much better than I do. Plus, plus my accent doesn't help, but can you tell us a little bit about what's going on this week at the CAI National Law Seminar? Well, I'm so glad you raised the Community Association Law Seminar. So in addition to being a partner in my firm, I'm also on the Board of Governors for the College of Community Association Lawyers, which is this arm of CAI that's all attorneys. And every year we put on our marquee event. It's called the Community Association Law Seminar, where we bring together lawyers and also managers and volunteers from all over the country to gather for three or four days to focus on legal issues that face condo associations and homeowners associations throughout the country. And, you know, we usually get between five and 800 people. This year, the event is going to be in Las Vegas, uh, based in the ARIA. And we have, I think, a record registration already for people who are going to come attend this event. Wow. All right. Now, you did mention the College of Community Association Lawyer, the, the CCAL. Can you tell us a little bit about what you guys do? Sure. Well, CCAL is, that's our little name for it. it it's an organization. We've got a, a bunch of different purposes within the umbrella of CAI. One of our main purposes to put this event on. And this event is really designed primarily to aim at lawyers to, you know, have classes and sessions involving legal issues that are actually in our practice area. If you go to, you know, these CLE required sessions in your home state, you often don't get this level of a deep dive into community association issues. So that's what the main purpose of our organization is. In addition to that, we, we have a bunch of other purposes. I'll keep an eye on the industry, make sure that we've got good ethical behavior from all of the players. We're there to promote education and and training for managers as well as for board members. But really, this is our big event. This is where we all come together and share stories and have education with one another. And I'm glad that you're interviewing me this week on that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's apparently it is a pretty big event. Now, I, I don't typically attend the law seminar. Say I'm a first time attendee. What, what can we, I expect to see out there for, for this event? We have a dozen or so or more classes actually aimed at all, all sorts of different topics. I did look at the list for this year. I mean, we, we're having a session on social media. We're having several sessions about what the insurance industry is going through in the last few years, especially in the wake of the collapse of the condo and surf side. We have a whole a session on chat GPT and dealing with AI in the context of lawyering in our business. We've got a fair housing session. So when you come to this thing, you see a whole a whole uh, array of different classes that are aimed at our industry. In addition to that, and you'll see this in between sessions, you see lawyers and managers from all over the country who see each other once a year, and they come and share stories about how their how their lives are going in the context of their careers as they service associations. Okay, okay. Is there is there a keynote speaker? We, we do have a very interesting and inspirational keynote speaker this year. Her name is uh, Gina Biancini. She is one of these super smart tech gurus who actually focuses on what she calls designing communities online. If you think about online communities, they often erupt in a random and chaotic way, sometimes yeah. for the good of mankind, right? She's all about trying to organize them and give them a purpose that makes sense which is a great metaphor for our industry. I mean, the community association industry has a very specific goal in mind, which is to help these volunteer homeowners run their associations. That is their purpose. And she's going to, I think, say some inspirational things to all of us about how perhaps we can better harness these platforms
sometimes for the good of community associations rather than for their the negative effects they can have. Is there any must attend ses sessions for some people that aren't too familiar? Well, listen, every year, one of our most popular sessions, we call it, it's in the general session. It's talked to the whole entire, all the registrants of the seminar is the case law update. It's where we pick out two of our really good lawyers and, and we put them up and they kind of walk through all of the landmark cases that have occurred all over the country in the last 12 months. I was lucky enough, I think three or four years ago to be able to do it for a couple of years in a row. And this year we've got two really good speakers uh, doing that. In addition to that, we have what we call a panel of pundits. Which we line up four lawyers from across the country, different regions, different ages, and put them on stage and ask them impromptu questions that they don't know what they're going to be asked, uh, which is a great session. And then, as I mentioned, we're dealing with insurance, we're dealing with AI, we're dealing with traditional fair housing issues. But those are our, really our two big general session items, those, the case law update and the in the panel of pundits. Now, that's interesting to hear. And I like that there's so many sessions that are going to be tied to insurance. Now, I was looking at the program and like this session has got my attention. It says Apocalypse Soon, part one and two. Part one, <laughs> preparing or navigating the worst case property insurance market. And part two is termination and dissolution of a community association, risk management and insurance issues. So like this is very intriguing and very appetizing, so to speak, when it comes to attending an event. I'm very much looking forward to it. But in your professional experience, like what do you see the challenges are between the insurance and the law realms of the industry? Well, I, as you all both know, uh, in the wake of what happened in Florida a few years ago, the insurance market is a little bit of an uproar. Looking at condo associations and HOAs as a little more risky than they used to look at them in the past. And in the wake of the collapse of that building, you see legislation happening all over the country, and that all ripples forward to the insurance market. And so it's a tough time for community associations in that market. And so, so that's one session that's going to focus on navigating that market. That's the one you mentioned. In addition to that, actually, I'm going to sit on a panel one of the days where we're going to talk about the need to build alliances between condo lawyers like me and insurance guys like you. Because so many times our clients will go out to bid for insurance and they won't be asking the right questions because they don't necessarily understand what their legal obligation is when it comes to procuring insurance. So I'm going to sit in with a couple of great insurance agents to talk about how we can better strengthen the connection between the lawyer side of the world and the insurance side of the world so that our collective clients get the best advice. I, I, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree with you more, Brendan. You know, and we would do work very, very closely with all the the association attorneys for all of all of our insureds because the, a lot there's a lot of ping pong, there's a lot of back and forth, and the insureds really aren't, and the community associations, the boards, the managers, they're not really sure if it's a legal question or it's an insurance question, and sometimes the two may intermingle a lot when you're talking about analysis of governing docs and and what laws are in place in what states. So there, there's a very, very close relationship. I got to tell you though, we always get the phone call first because because it, it, the meter's not running yet when they call us, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's no. I couldn't. I couldn't agree with you more. There, there really has to be a cohesive bond between the attorneys and the insurance representatives to make sure that the that the boards are understanding fully what it is and what it means to to protect their own community. So, so but specifically on a legal on a legal platform, and this is a broad question. What do you see as far as in the near future some of the most important legal challenges? And you mentioned some legislation that's going through. Is, it, is that really what you guys are filling most of your day? Well, you know, legislation, listen, one of the jobs that CCAL has is to monitor legislation around the country. At least the members of CCAL do that to make sure that we're, our industry is not getting killed at the local level due to unwise regulation. So, so that's certainly one piece of it. But, you know, we have certain groups within CEI that kind of handle that, but it's something we all have to be more mindful of. I think one of the great things we can do is to really, from an insurance perspective, is try to educate people about what insurance is about, particularly in condominiums. One of the great gaps of knowledge I see on a daily basis is that even managers don't understand how a condominium is insured, what a master policy is versus an eight to six policy for homeowners, how the master deductible is dealt with in most condominiums. I mean, that is a great area we can educate people on better at the local level and the national level, because it's a real, it's a real problem. Listen, there are other bunch of challenges too in our industry. There's an epidemic of bad behavior that we're seeing across the country, whether it's social media going wild or the you know, our political divide, the results of COVID, whatever that is, people are really acting out. And they're freaking our managers out. They're freaking our boards out. So one of the great legal challenges I think we have across the country is to try to get a grip on the best way to approach difficult people. And that's another thing you're gonna we're gonna talk about some at the seminar this year. Interesting. Well, now for those that might be considering sending their staff 
to to this event maybe a new firm that is coming to the market into condo association and they're thinking as well should we go should we not go now how do you define the return on investment for companies that might be just new to the market new firm coming into this the space and they is it trying to determine should we send our guys should we not send our guys should i go or not H how can we define that how can we help well listen your insurance guys are always a little bit better at this business this business type of a question okay and the return on investment of attending this seminar is not always obvious the first time you go okay because yes you're anyone who goes to this seminar is going to get hit with all sorts of knowledge from all sorts of different topic areas the question is how that person uses that knowledge when they go home how do they how do they use that to, to improve their situation in their local marketplace and build their relationships locally and use that knowledge the other thing that's kind of a secret value I think for something like the law seminar is the relationships you build with those people that you see once a year. Because you go to one seminar, you don't really know that many people, but you get to know a few. You go back two, three, four, five, 20 times like I've gone, all of a sudden you go there and it's old home week. You're seeing people that you that you really know well, and you really can learn a lot from people from other places. I mean, I'm a DC That's and Virginia right. lawyer, but you know what? When I go, I talk to California lawyers, I talk to Georgia lawyers, I talk to Washington state lawyers, and I learn a lot about what's going there because so often what's going on there it may not be in my market yet but it's on the way so i get ahead of that by talking to my fellow practitioners and probably the same for you guys in the insurance world i would imagine by attending a session like this yeah absolutely definitely 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 because there's and like you said sometimes you get a little bit of wind of what's going on across the country that maybe hasn't hit your your quote-unquote territory yet but it looks like we're running a little short on time now but brennan man thank you thank you for being here it was such a pleasure to meet you in person down in dc david i'm sure is looking forward to, to meeting up with you in Vegas. I will not be attending, but we'd like to give our guests an opportunity on the show to to just to, to grab the mic and maybe provide some takeaways for our audience, just a message. It could just be a thank you to a mentor or somebody who's been influential in your career. Brendan, the mic is yours, man. Go for it. Wow, that is an opportunity I, I, I didn't expect, but I guess if, if I had to focus on one thing, I'm going to be a little selfish now. I actually am the rising president of CCAL for this year, so I have a bunch of MC and speech duties to carry out this week, but I actually I like to thank my firm. I got, you know, eight partners and, you know, there's a lot that goes into being a leader at the national level and the local level. And I say my law firm is so supportive of this kind of thing. We're so supportive of CA and we just love having the opportunity. So I'd like to thank my partners. I think that's, it's not always easy. Lawyers are supposed to bill hours all the time, right? But uh, this is one year where it's hard to do that given what I've got ahead of me. So, uh, so thanks to them. All right. Well, thank you, Brandon, for joining us. And thank you everybody at Chadwick Washington Moriarty Elmo and Bun for supporting the C Cal President of the Year. Oh, well, well said there, David. Well said. All right. We'll see you in Vegas and see you all next week on the next episode of Car Chat.